Good morning, we're back in Proverbs. It's chapter 20 and it's verse 11 today. We're going to read all the way to verse 20. Let's go for it. Here we go. Even small children are known by their actions. So is their conduct really pure and upright? Ears that hear and ears that see, the Lord has made them both. Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. It's no good, it's no good, says the buyer, then goes off and boasts about the purchase. Gold there is, and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment off one who puts up security for a stranger, hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet, but one ends up with a mouth full of gravel. Plans are established by seeking advice, so if you wage war, obtain guidance. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. If someone curses their father or mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. Well, there is nothing like scripture to teach us that we really are not there yet. Wow, what a passage. Let's jump straight in at verse 11. It says, even small children are known by their actions, so is their conduct really pure and upright? We see kids as innocent, don't we? And they are innocent. There's a lot about life that they don't know, and there's a lot about life they don't need to know until they're older. Are they pure and upright? I remember a minister once saying, you do not have to teach a child to be naughty. It already knows how to do it. And that's true. We have to train our children in the way that's going to produce the best life for them. And when we're born onto this planet, we have no idea why we shouldn't just take what we want, do what we want, treat others as we want to. And it's the job of the carer or the parent to help train that child to be able to fit not just into social norms, but to be able to live a life that respects other people, to respect property, and that they need to earn things in life. This is just the way life is, but it's also so good for self-respect and for self-esteem. This is why the Bible talks repeatedly about not neglecting to instruct our children. The word discipline in scripture in the Hebrew does not mean punish. It means educational correction, to correct, to instruct. Now, sometimes this needs to be done with Sometimes we have to make sure our children know that we're very serious about the correction we give them. But that does not mean that we are punishing them or harming them. In fact, we are trying to teach them and correct them gently in the way that is going to be most profitable for them in life. Verse 12 tells us that the Lord has actually made us eyes that see and ears that hear. When we can't understand in a situation, similar to how children don't always understand, we can ask the Holy Spirit for his understanding. One of the gifts that he gives us is understanding because he is understanding itself. He's God, so he understands everything. So he can actually enlighten us and help us as we are learning on in life. We are being corrected by him because we are the children that he loves. The Bible says that he corrects those he loves. And he is always seeking to correct me and show me a better way. Now I can choose to listen to his advice and to seek his face on issues. Or I can choose to sleep. And in verse 13 it says, Do not love to sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. You know, we can sleep inside our own selves. Paul actually said, Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. But waking up is partly our responsibility. The Lord wakes us spiritually, but when we hear him nudging, when we know we don't understand in a certain situation, it is our responsibility to take that time to actually ask him, to 
take the time to ask for wisdom. Asking for wisdom is not just saying, Lord, give me wisdom. It's bringing the situation before him and asking for him to help us in that situation. The Lord loves us to talk to him in detail. He needs detailed prayers, like when King David said, should I go to war? And um, God said, yes, you should. Then David said, what should I do? And God tells him and he goes out and God, David says, will I win? And God says, yes, you will. They were direct questions. David was asking for God's understanding and God's wisdom in the certain situation. And he took the time to do it. We can choose to sleep spiritually or we can choose to stay awake spiritually we can choose to have our quiet times because we want to hear what God has to say to us or we can choose not to have them because we really don't have any reason to hear what God has to say to us but we're sleeping we're fast asleep we're not growing spiritually and we're not having any food spiritually and in the end we're going to be poor spiritually because we only receive that which we will take from him Jesus said the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who will take it by force. He said that people, men, violent men, will take the kingdom of heaven. And we need to be violent in our relationship with the Lord. We need to desire and seek and want to hear his correction. We want to be disciplined by him. The word discipline has been twisted, contorted to mean punishment, but it just means correction, educational correction him coming alongside of us guiding us and leading us and when he knows that he has our ear because that's from him an ear that he is when he knows he has that he's so 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 happy because he can do so much for us and talk to us and guide us and lead us like he wanted to from the very beginning it's funny you know in verse 14 we notice that we so very often settle we settle in life when we realise that things are not good. It's not good, it's not good, says the buyer, then goes off and boasts about the purchase. We settle. And because we know really and truthfully, life is not good. Life is not how we would want it. We're insecure and so we boast. We put on a facade and a front and we pretend that life is exactly how we would want it. That we're doing well. And we settle. We settle with that purchase that really is not good god is good but we choose to live without that goodness you know it's like the prodigal son when he goes away from his father and he spends all of his money he ends up eating pig food and the phrase is in the english he came to his senses another phrase is he came to himself he realized this isn't good and he wasn't willing anymore to settle now he could have said but this is the bed I've made and I'm not going to let my father know because of pride and I'm not going to take that journey to go back to him. I'm just going to sit here and sleep in my mess. And maybe it's not a mess. You know, he had food and he had a place to work and he obviously had a place to sleep, but he didn't have what he could have had. And getting that took a bit of work and it took a bit of effort and it took a bit of humility. He had to admit things hadn't gone the way he'd planned. He had to admit life wasn't really what he wanted. But you know what? He went for gold. He went for gold. He got up and he walked to his father. And when his father saw him, his father ran to him and his father gave him the gold, the best robe, the best sandals, a ring for his finger, and rings meant commitment. Rings meant you belong to me. A ring meant welcome home, and it also meant authority. It meant you have authority in my household. And the fatted calf, the fatted calf that was usually kept for the best visitor. And he threw a party. And although that son had to swallow his pride, all of a sudden that pride that he swallowed was replaced with authority it was replaced with him being the honored guest because he'd been honest sometimes we settle for material things well i've got everything i need and sometimes we have aims in life to get higher and higher and higher up the business ladder or the money ladder or the property ladder or the fame ladder whatever it might be but verse 15 says gold there is rubies in abundance but lips that speak knowledge are rare like a jewel. Getting knowledge from the Holy Spirit. 
Having a relationship with God is work. It does take time. It's not something you can sleep over. If you're the kind of person who is sleeping but never spending any time with the Lord, living but never really considering him and listening to the Holy Spirit, you're poor. You're poor in the things of the Spirit. And you're not going to have that rare knowledge that makes such a difference, not just in your life, but also in the lives of others. And, you know, we can all put it on, can't we? We can all put on that facade of being a Christian and we can repeat the things that our minister says every Sunday or that we've heard on God TV or God radio or waking with the word or anywhere else that we've heard these things about the Lord. But actually, verse 17 says that food gained by fraud tastes sweet, but one ends up with a mouthful of gravel. And we're fraudulent when we're not walking with God. It's fraud because we're pretending to other people that we know him, that we have knowledge, that we can hear from him every single day, that we're so sure of what we're saying, but we're not sure because we're not living by it. Jesus said that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the father's mouth. So if we are not hearing those words ourselves, what God is saying to us every day, then we're fraudulent and we're not living, we're existing. We're surviving, but we're not living. It must be the one thing that I want every single day to hear what my father has to say. We have a dynamic relationship with God. We, we, those of us that know the Lord, know we can hear the very voice of our creator every single day. And there are many people who don't know that. There are many people who are living hopeless lives in hopeless situations and they're making the best of it. They're saying it's not good, it's not good, but then they're walking away and boasting about that purchase because do you know what? It's all there is and so I'll make the best of it and I'll look the best and I'll show off the best. And at the core of their being there is an insecurity an insecurity that actually comes from not knowing who they are, not knowing why they're here not knowing what life is all about. So we will make the best of it. And there is love and they love and they care for one another so very much and they respect one another, but they do not have the voice of the one who created them and loves them. And you know, they can cry, but they cannot cry out to him. But you can, and you are in the position to hear from him every day. You're in the position to give out words in season without even having to say it's from the Lord. You can speak his word because you receive his word from the Holy Spirit, not from other places and other people and just regurgitate it and pass it on. You will end up with a mouth full of gravel. And it will taste sweet and it will seem like wisdom but it's not good for anything. It's not good for real insight. It's not good for real deep inspiration. It's not what you can base your life upon. But it's good if you just want to sleep a little bit longer and seem like the real thing. In verse 18, it says plans are established by seeking advice. So if you wage war, obtain guidance. But where do you seek advice from? Yes, you go to church. Yes, maybe you attend Bible study. But this life is a war. It is a war. It's a war to get the best. It's a war to get the gold. Are you going for gold? Then whose advice are you seeking? You know, you can seek the advice of the other athletes or you can seek the advice of the coach. You can seek the advice of those who are also running the race and don't know what's down the, the course. Or you can seek the advice of the course maker. You can seek the advice of those who are also searching the internet for the answer to their symptoms, or you can go to the doctor. Jesus said, I've come for those that need a doctor. In verse 19, we're told that a gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. Wow, that's a verse that's very, very good for me to hear, because I talk a lot. But let's keep it in context of what I'm talking about at the moment. How much time do you spend talking about God? 
And how much time do you spend talking to God? And are you the kind of person that God can tell his secrets to? Does he know that he could confide in you things and you're not going to go and share them with other people? This is for me as well. You know, God tells me some miraculous things sometimes. And he's been saying to me recently, Emily, can I tell you more? But I want you to keep it to yourself. You know, so very often we want to show it off, don't we? We want to be seen as the people God is speaking to. So we want to tell people about this experience and that experience and this prophecy and that one. But you know he trusts you when you keep his confidence. He wants an intimate relationship with you where he can talk to you every day, where he knows that you seek his face, that you want to hear his voice and that you will keep the confidence of what he is telling you. Verse 20 talks about cursing our father and mother and that our lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. And what about our heavenly father? All through Proverbs, a father and mother are talked about very, very admirably, as if they're fathers and mothers that have given us advice and cared for us and wanted us to do well. We don't all have that on earth, but we do have it in our heavenly father. Curse is a very harsh word here because in the Hebrew it can also mean to treat with contempt, to despise or slight. It can actually mean to be easy with. Are you being easy with your Heavenly Father? Treating him with contempt, slighting him because you'd rather sleep than seek his face. You'd rather, rather have pleasures and just go your own way and settle than actually seek the gold that he has for you? Do you know how much he loves you and how much he wants to do for you and how he wants to guide you in life? And yet you're just going along, settling for what you have now. This whole passage has been talking to us about ourselves. And in verse 16, we have, take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger, hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. But you know, in the Hebrew where it says to hold it in pledge, that can actually mean to bind. And it doesn't mean bind in a very good way either. To destroy. Or it can mean to offend. It can mean to deal with corruptly. It means to band together. This verse is all about strangers. It's all about foreigners, those people who don't belong. And how you can put up security for them, but you end up being all bound up. Two things I want to say about this is, firstly, we're meant to focus on ourselves. The only person that can give you the life that you're meant to have with the Holy Spirit is you. But secondly, if you settle for being an outsider, for being someone else, and you give your pledge, you give your, your garment, you know, your security, you're actually giving your garment up. And in the Bible, garments and robes signify things about you. Joseph was given a garment of many colours. When we meet the Lord after death, the Bible says we'll be given a garment of righteousness. Garments are coverings. And so this verse is saying that if you want to make a stranger secure, then you will have your garment, your covering taken away from you. And it will be held in pledge that you are going to put that security up that you have promised for that foreigner. But a foreigner is a strange person. It's someone who's not meant to belong. And you're saying, because of me, they can belong. We need to take our eyes off of other people. We also need to take our eyes off of the people we're not meant to be. We need to realise that you're giving up the covering and the relationship with the Holy Spirit that God wants you to have because you're seeking to be someone that you shouldn't be. And you're wanting to maintain a distance in your relationship with God that should not be there. And you're saying it is good, it is good. And you're walking away with a purchase and boasting about it. When the truth is, you know, it's not good, it's not real. Why are we settling? Today in the Come Back to God campaign, we pray for Stephanie. Sometimes during the week, Stephanie helps by cooking and preparing the meals for the staff 
and any guests. She's also the person who does all of our descriptions now for our YouTube channel. We have nearly 400 videos on there at the moment and they're growing every single day by about two to four videos. Please pray for Steph as she continues to work at the retreat centre and also cares for her little brother Aaron and that he has a good day at school. What about you? Can we pray for you that you won't settle anymore for a life that actually is below what God has for you? If we can, please get in touch because we would love to pray and talk to you. Take care. Have a wonderful day. God bless you all.